So I just finished the movie Bird Box over on Netflix. I go, hoo, hoo, hoo. It was an excellent movie. But this movie actually shows perfectly the link between depression and loneliness. And I'm gonna tell you about a really cool study that proves it. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. And what I like to do is pull different topics from pop culture to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And if you're wondering about where I got that gorgeous scarf for the thumbnail, it uh, it's actually a, a Christmas present my son gave to my beautiful girlfriend, Tristan because she loves owls. But yeah, worked perfectly for the thumbnail. If you haven't seen Bird Box yet, there's going to be spoilers. It's a great movie, excellent movie. I loved it. And also, um, I'm going to be using some of the ideas that I pulled from an awesome YouTuber who I just subscribed to. His name is Think Story. He explained it perfectly. Like even at the end, I was kind of like confused. Like I made some of the connections he did, but he has a great explanation of the movie. So I'm gonna link his uh, video down in the description as well as up in the info card if you wanna get uh, more of a breakdown of the movie, all right? So just to kind of uh, sum it up, I'm gonna be talking about two different topics here, all right? I'm gonna be talking about the link between depression and loneliness. And then I'm also going to be explaining the monsters. All right, so we start off with um, Sandra Bullock's character, Mallory, and she's pregnant. She was left by uh, her man named Ryan, and it starts off with her seeing her sister, and she's an artist, and in her first painting that she's working on when her sister comes over, she talks about how, you know, these, these people are there, they're all together, but you can see that they're lonely, right? And there's a lot of darkness in all of her paintings, right? And when she goes to the OBGYN, um, she, she doesn't feel connected to her baby and she's also thinking about giving it up for adoption, all right? But you can tell that Mallory has this kind of like, I look on life where she's disconnected, right? She's disconnected from other people. And maybe, you know, that's partially because the, the father of the kid left, but you also find out throughout the movie that she didn't have a great relationship with her mom or her dad. Like her sister talks to her mom for her and that's how they get these updates and everything like that. But Throughout this movie, you see how Mallory has these walls up and she is just an isolated person, right? And it's hard for her to make connections with other people. And some would argue that that's helped her survive, but this is actually something that we can look at with some psychology too. Some of these things that we do, like the walls that we build up, these are defense mechanisms that we built up as a kid, right? And they served a purpose as a kid. Maybe when we got too close to people, it hurt us, and we carried that on throughout our life, but later on, it can actually hurt us, okay? And that, to me, is kind of what this movie was talking about. And later on, as the movie goes forward, we see how Mallory starts to build more connections. But, like, you really start to see it when when the kids are, how old are they, like five years old, you see that she named these kids boy and girl, all right? Like, she was so disconnected and didn't want to build this bond with people so much that she named the children boy and girl. And, you know, what, what set her back a little bit, but only briefly, was the loss of Tom, right? They fell in love and, you know, they were alive together until something happened to Tom later on. But anyways... One of the topics that I think was interesting too was how depression from a parent can, can affect a child too. So I think, you know, one of, the, one of the symbols in there was like, she was sheltering those kids too. So her and Tom get into this argument where Tom was telling, telling them this story, right? This story about when he was a kid and he was outside playing and all these other things. And Mallory comes in there, she ends the story and all this, and she gets an argument with, meant with Tom. And Tom's like, yo, we gotta give these kids hope. Like, that's what it's about being a parent. And Tom calls her out for her ways and the way that she's, she's sheltering, has these walls up, and now it's affecting these kids too. He even calls her out for the fact that he named them boy and girl. But later on, towards the end of the movie, when um, Girl, <laughs> who is later named Olympia, almost gets taken by the monster, you know, Mallory gets her back by apologizing for what she's done, right? And she tells, she, she tells the rest of Tom's story and the daughter ends up coming back. But I think this is, this is a really important symbol too because as parents, if you're a parent out there, we have to work on our mental health. We have to work on our mental health 
for a multitude of reasons. It affects our kids in a variety of different ways, but one of the things is it might push our kids away. Like if we try to shelter them from everything from the outside world, it can affect them very, very greatly, right? And towards the end of the movie, like the, the ending of the movie, is Mallory now having this connection, okay? We see that in a few different ways. When she goes to the school for the blind, she names the kids finally, she lets them go and play, she lets the birds go and all this other stuff. She sees her old OBGYN and now Mallory has this connection, all right? But I wanna tell you about a study because there is this great, great link between depression and loneliness, all right? So this is actually a study that came from uh, my favorite depression book of the year called Lost Connections. Like it's all about depression and anxiety. I'm gonna link it down in the description and the uh, and in the comments below. Like you have to, have to, have to, have to read this book. This book is like the number one at the top of my list for anybody out there struggling with depression or anxiety. Anyways, there's a study in there that they talk about and the scientist who did this, his name was John Cassiopo, all right, Cassiopo, I think I'm saying that right. But anyways, he's a neuroscientist, all right? So and he ended up doing a, 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 an experiment because he thought there was a link between depression and loneliness or being disconnected from people. So for a long time, for a long time, even to this day, they thought that our brains were just malfunctioning, right? These chemical imbalances and all of this. So he was like, well, maybe there's something else going on. Maybe, maybe we need to look a little bit further. So he was uh, a professor at the University of Chicago. So what they did was they got 100 students, all right? They got 100 students, and they told them to just go about their days for three days, all right? Just live your normal life, do your thing, all right? So on the first day, on the first day, they had a few things, okay? They had a notepad, they had a beeper, and they had a heart monitor, okay? So whenever that beeper would beep, they had to write down the readings from the heart monitor, and they also had to say whether they felt lonely or connected to other people, all right? So if you imagine maybe they were walking down the street by themselves, they felt lonely, okay? But if the beeper went off while they were at dinner with friends or family, maybe they felt more connected, all right? So on day two, same thing with a beeper, but instead of having the heart monitor, they had these little plastic tubes that they had to spit in, okay? The reason they had to spit in them is because John wanted to measure the cortisol levels, okay? Those of you who don't know what cortisol is, that is a stress hormone. So they had to spit in the tube and also write down how lonely or connected they felt. And the, the results were absolutely mind blowing, okay? So when they got the test results back and they were measuring the heart rates and cortisol levels, like first off, the heart rates are up when somebody feels lonely, okay? But the, the cortisol levels, like that stuff was insane. People had the exact same cortisol levels when they felt lonely as when you're being physically attacked, all right? Like, let that sink in for a second. When you feel lonely and disconnected from other people, you have the same amount of stress as when you're being physically attacked. Isn't that insane? So this is why depression and anxiety fuel each other, all right? Cortisol is a stress hormone. It triggers anxiety. So when you are lonely, you are getting anxious as well. So this is why we need to work on building our connections. If you're ever interested, down in the description of every single one of my videos, we have a link to our Facebook group as well as our Discord server. I'm gonna do some other videos later on, like, Using, using technology to our advantage to connect with others is one of the best things that you can do for somebody who doesn't go out that much, all right? Like we need to feel connected with other people. In Mallory's case, in uh, Bird Box, it was feeling connected with her children, but she also started building connections with other people. Like she ended up naming the daughter Olympia after the nicest woman she ever met, right? She named the son Tom, okay? So like, she ended up building those connections later. So now, let's explain these monsters. Let's explain what this big bad monster was. So this is something else that um, Think Story actually talked about. So we never actually see those monsters, all right? We never see them. Now, it was, it was kind of confusing, but I think Think Story kind of explained it well. Like, there were people who could look at the monsters. So those of you who haven't seen it, but hopefully you have, because I just gave away like a lot of spoilers. But anyways, if you looked at the monster, or if you looked, right, that's why everybody has these blindfolds, like you go psychologically insane. But there were some people who could walk around without blindfolds on. And what we knew on a, on a couple occasions was, there was the first guy who took out uh, our boy from the movie Get Out, I forgot his name in the movie, uh, in this movie. But anyways, he was an ex-convict, all right? And then there was also the men who escaped from the insane asylum or the psych ward, right? 
and those people were able to look. So what they're saying is, is like people who had already faced their demons, they weren't affected. So what this was kind of symbolizing is when you're not facing these things, they're gonna come back and they're gonna mess you up, all right? So what, what happened was that Mallory didn't finally overcome these things until she faced her personal struggles. And one of the reasons we don't see these monsters is because we don't see our depression, we don't see our past, we don't see these things. They're all trapped up here. But Mallory, in order to save her kids, she had to break down those walls, she had to break down those barriers and save them, all right? So that is the theory as to why we don't ever see these monsters, okay? They're all up here. But in order to heal, you gotta feel, baby. That's what I'm trying to teach you. But anyways, I wanna hear your thoughts. If you saw Bird Box, did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you understand the link between depression and loneliness? Let's have a conversation down below, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron and get some exclusive content, you can click or tap right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.